Hi, this is Tech with Costa, and I'm sharing my engineering journey. In this video, I'm going to show you the essential terminal commands to interact with Linux. This is an important skill for developers and engineers, as we use this for coding projects in tech and data. In the previous video, we installed WSL. So now, when you open Windows Terminal, you should see by default the Ubuntu command line interface, or CLI. The default shell on Ubuntu is Linux Bash. And this is like Command Prompt, or PowerShell, on Windows. It's a way to interact with the operating system using the keyboard and commands to execute tasks. Sometimes, this is much more efficient than using the guided user interface. In your machine, you should also see something like this, so let's break this down. Costa, this is the username of the currently logged in user. Then we see at desktop, this is the host name of the computer. It identifies the specific computer within a network. Then we have a colon separating the first part from the second part. In the second part, we see a tilde. This symbol represents the current directory we are at. In Unix-like systems, tilde is shorthand for the user's home directory. For the user Costa, tilde represents slash home slash Costa. And finally, a dollar sign. This is the default prompt symbol in many Unix-like systems. It indicates that the shell is ready to accept commands. So when you see this, you are logged in as the user Costa, you are working on a computer named Desktop, you are currently in your home directory, slash home, slash Costa, indicated by the tilde symbol, and the shell is ready to accept commands. Let's actually confirm what the tilde means. Let's write PWD and hit Enter. PWD stands for Print Working Directory, and in this case, Tilde means that we are currently working on slash home slash Costa. Now let's see the contents of this path by typing ls. This stands for list. If we hit enter, we see that we don't get anything, so it's empty. However, let's type ls dash a. Now we can see more files and folders because these files and folders contain a dot behind them, and that means they are hidden. The white names are files and the blue names are folders. When we have a question about the options we can use with a command, we can search for them online, but we can also type help afterwards. So ls space dash dash help. And now we can see all the options and the descriptions that we can combine with this command. You see, for example, the dash a1 that we used, it means do not ignore entries starting with dot. We can combine both commands by using the shorthand la and LA will also print the hidden files and folders. Now let's clean the terminal. We can do that by typing clear enter. Let's hit LA again. And now let's hit control L. And it also clears the terminal. You can also see all the commands you typed so far by typing history, enter. Now let's go to the root directory. Let's type CD to change the directory space forward slash. Now you see that the tilde changed to a forward slash. If we hit PWD, we are just in forward slash or root. Let's type ls, and now we can see all the folders in the root directory. So the root directory, or forward slash, is the starting point for the entire file system hierarchy in Linux. Everything on your system, including files, directories, and devices, is organized under the root directory. It's similar to the C directory in Windows systems. All other directories and files are organized beneath this root directory. For example, slash home, slash usr, slash bin, slash etc, etc. So now we can go back to the user's home folder. We could do cd slash home slash costa and then enter. And we are at tilde again. Let's go back to the root. We can also go back to the user's home folder by typing simply cd. And this is a fast way to go to the user's home directory, regardless of the current working directory. Now let's create a test folder using mkdir space, the name of the folder. I will call it test folder ls. We can see the new folder has been created. Let's go inside this folder by typing cd space test folder tilde forward slash test folder. Working inside this folder now, pwd home costa test folder. Let's go one step back in the path by typing cd space two dots. On Linux Bash, one dot represents the current directory. When you are working in a directory and you reference a file or a directory using a dot, you are referring to something in the current directory. On the other hand, the double dot represents the parent directory. This means it refers to the directory that contains the current directory. For example, in this case, one dot would refer to home costa test folder and the double dot refers to home costa, so one step backwards in the path. That's why the command cd space double dot takes us from home costa test folder to home costa or tilde. Now let's go inside test folder again, but now let's not write the name of the folder. Let's type cd space and then press the tab key two times. One, two. 
The tab key is used to autocomplete your commands. If, for example, in this directory, test folder was the only folder there, if I hit tab, it would autocomplete with cd test folder. However, there's two folders here. One, it's hidden, dot cache, and the unhidden test folder. If I type T, it will autocomplete the first item that starts with a T. If I hit tab again, now it correctly autocompletes test folder. Enter, and then we are here again. Let's go back one time again. Now let's delete this folder. RM space R test folder. LS, and the test folder has been deleted. The dash R option is used to remove a directory. It's a recursive option. We can check that by typing RM help. You see dash R removes directories and their contents recursively. Let's clear the terminal. Now let's create a file. Touch test file dot txt, for example, a text file, ls. And now you see the file instead of blue, it's white. Now let's see what's inside this file. Cat, and then I can autocomplete. Test file, autocomplete again, and the file is empty. Let's edit this file. Let's type nano t, autocomplete with tab, test file, enter. And now we are in a text editor in the bash. Let's add something. Hello 2024. Let's save the file. Control X. Save modified buffer. Type Y to say yes. Then the file name. Let's overwrite that. So just hit enter. Now let's cat the file again to see the contents of it. Two times up arrow to go through the history and find the same command. Enter. And we see that hello the Zoom Camp 2024 is there. Let's edit the file again. New line. Let's save again. Yes, enter, cat again, and now you see a new line. ls, let's remove the file, rm test file, ls, and the file has been deleted. In the previous video, we've used two additional commands. sudo apt update, this is a command used on Ubuntu to update the package lists for software repositories. This command retrieves information about the latest versions of packages available for installation on your system. And then, sudo apt upgrade. This is a command used to upgrade all the installed packages to their latest versions. It installs newer versions of the software packages you have installed on your system, ensuring you have the latest features, bug fixes and security patches. sudo stands for super user do. It allows a regular user to execute commands with elevated privileges to perform administrative tasks that require root or administrator access. This helps protect the system from unauthorized changes. It's like run as administrator on Windows. It asks you for a password and then you can run everything as administrator. And I think this covers the basics that you need to know to actually start interacting with the bash.